Hello and welcome, so soon I know, to another Little Nightmares Theory video. Or should I say, a Little Nightmares 2 Theory video. In this theory in particular, I'm going to do my best to break down and describe what I believe to be the story in Little Nightmares 2. So it goes without saying, of course, this is a theory, but that's all the fun of it when it comes to Little Nightmares. I'm going to answer burning questions, like why did Mono turn into the Thin Man at the end of the game? Why did Six seemingly betray Mono the way she did? And more importantly, where did Mono get that hat from? So let's not waste any more time and dive straight into the story. On the surface, it's quite simple, really. Mono rescues Six, they shoot the Huntsman, <laughs> escape from the teacher, burn the doctor alive, free the thin man, Six gets captured, Mono defeats the thin man, rescues Six, regrets rescuing Six, long live the king. And then slowly, Mono transforms into the thin man. Well, there you have it. That was a quick video, wasn't it? I'll see you guys later. <laughs> if you know little nightmares like me, however, you'll know that simple isn't a word that exists in the little nightmares universe. And to understand what exactly is going on with the story, we're going to have to take a closer look at what all these actions really mean. But before we delve into the characters, we need to understand what the signal tower really is. The name sounds like it's broadcasting the signal to the TVs, and that's about it. But I think that might only be because of what's inside of it. The Thin Man. The Thin Man's power, much like Mono's, is to travel through the TVs and shoot out frequencies. Or something like that. Oh no, he does something weird with his hand, look at him. But the signal tower may be similar to another place we've came across in the Little Nightmares universe. The Moor. The Moor was described as needing the lady to function, which is precisely why she's there, and may explain why the Thin Man is in the tower. These places require a person to be there, and without them, they cease to exist. Just like the end of Little Nightmares, when the lady is defeated, Six gets the lady's powers and takes her place. These structures are places in which nightmares exist, and they need a host to feed from. When Six is inside the tower, she doesn't become the signal man. She becomes her own nightmare. But Mono, well, we all know how that ends up. Speaking of which, let's talk about our favorite box head wearing a fellow. So let me tell you how this all came to- No, not that one. This one. <laughs> That's better. Mono. The name being a reference to different frequencies like mono and stereo, which could relate to his interactions with the television sets. But let's be honest, he does quite a lot of that. From the very beginning of the game, Mono sets out to find the Thin Man and free him. Whether this is subconscious or not, he is always drawn to the alluring static of the televisions. In a not too dissimilar way to that of Six and her pursuit of the lady in the first game. Along the way, Mono comes across a child we now know to be Six, playing with a music box in a room all alone. Six is in stark contrast to Mono during the majority of the game. Mono has one focus, releasing the Thin Man and getting to the signal tower. Six on the other hand, besides wanting to escape the Huntsman's house, doesn't seem to have a clear goal, except to accompany Mono. We see her quite often disinterested in Mono's quest. A lot of the time playing with objects in the world, a football in front of the school, playing with a mannequin's hand in the hospital, or even warming her hands by the smoldering remains of the doctor. <laughs> Needless to say, she's a very passive part of the adventure. Until she's not. The moment that Six takes control of a situation and makes a decision that puts into effect something much bigger than both of them. The cycle begins again. The time loop theory. Time loop? What do you mean time loop? Well, if you manage to collect all the glitch children fragments in the game before completing it, you get this secret ending.
Here you see Six's next steps after she escapes the signal tower, the mall, pointed out to her by Shadow Six. And it's here we realize The Little Nightmares 2 is not a sequel, but a prequel in a series of events that are destined to repeat themselves. So if Mono is the thin man, then who is Six? In my previous theories, there have always been a common thread linking Six with the lady in one way or another, but now it's all become clear. The reason why the lady hums the same tune as Six's music box. The reason why the picture in Six's nightmare appears in the lady's own bedroom. The reason why just before it's destroyed, the music box is the exact same shape as the mall, chimney and all. Six is the lady from a previous cycle. Just as Mono is destined to become the thin man, Six is now destined to become the lady of the mall. The reason why Six is so attached to the music box in her monster state during her nightmare in the signal tower is because of what the music box represents. Remember, Six is only nine at the time of the events of Little Nightmares. Six is still a child and the music box makes her feel safe. It's something that was always constant to her until Mono, you know, smacked down the door. Her entire nightmare room becomes a safe space for her. Even the teddy bears and toys are a reminder of the fun she had in the hospital when her and Mono were playing with the x-ray machine. The reason why the moor is shaped like the destroyed music box is because that is her desire. It's her nightmare. A life with it or a life without it. With it, she can't bear to be apart from it. And without it, is a nightmare all in itself. And if we just stop for a moment and have a look at the room that Six finds herself trapped in, there are even more clues that tie her to the lady. In general, the room is a purple color. And that's something that we found in the original Little Nightmares game that seems to be synonymous with the lady. Her residence area, her bedroom, everything is purple. Even down to the wallpaper that we can see in this room. Even if we look at the residence DLC for Little nightmares. The same dolls that the lady was holding and caressing are right next to Six. Many times through the battle with Six's monster form, Mono has to break down a door to enter her room. In these brief moments after Mono has smashed the music box, he finds himself in an empty vacuum. I believe this is what actually lies inside the signal tower. Nothing. But the monster that we see at the end of the game take control of Mono is already taking control of Six, therefore leaving the rest of the place barren. And how does Mono get back to Six? He smashes down the door just like he did when he first met Six. That this room we see Six in isn't actually her nightmare, but Mono breaking into the room is the nightmare. He was the one that took her away from her safe space, away from her music box. And just like Six's inevitable prison, it's the same way for the Thin Man and his giant tower. On the Little Nightmares website, in the Thin Man's description, it states he's searching for something. That something is Six. And what better way to find her than a giant tower overlooking all other buildings. So if this thin man is Mono, then why does he hunt you? And why does he steal Six away from you? He's not trying to kill Mono, he's trying to save him, his past self. The thin man knows that if Mono keeps on going this course, he's going to end up exactly the same as him. That Six is going to drop him into the abyss, inadvertently become the next thin man. So what does he do? He takes away Six from Mono in hopes of breaking his own cycle. He doesn't try to kill you when he captures you. He's trying to stop you. He's actively trying to chase you away from the TV, away from Six, and to stop you from rescuing her. Chasing you away from the signal tower where she's kept. Holding out his hand to stop you. Unfortunately, by the end, his desire to save himself is not as strong as his child self desire to save Six, and over and over again, he is defeated. 
But the Thin Man isn't the only one that is trying to break this cycle, and he's not the only one suffering with a self-fulfilling prophecy. The Lady too tries to stop it. Her imprisoning of the children is her way of stopping anyone who resembles Six coming after her, as she knows she was a child when she devoured the previous lady. She has deliberately broken every mirror in an attempt to disarm Six of a weapon, the only weapon that can defeat her. Although she herself doesn't have it in her to kill any children and instead turns them into faceless, powerless gnomes that help power them all. And this brings us to the moment. You know the one where someone will montage loads of popular YouTubers reacting to it. Wait, why am I there? The moment where escape seemed so close, about to escape the nightmare that is the signal tower. Six had a chance to save Mono, but didn't. Why? From the first time we see Six in the game, she's cramped tight around the music box. It's important to her, and it's why when she's all alone in her own nightmare in the signal tower, that it too is also there. When Mono calls out to her, she presents the music box to him as if sharing it with him, like a child wanting to show a parent a toy they like. And what does Mono do instead? He destroys it. To Mono, this makes sense. He's doing it to save her from the nightmare that she finds herself trapped within. But to Six, this enrages her. And from here on out, she only wants to protect her music box from Mono, even to the point of killing him. The one person that's been helping her so far. When Mono finally destroys the music box and brings Six back to her normal self, she isn't the same anymore. She gets up slowly and stares down Mono. Even though he did this for her own good, she didn't want him to. If we take a look back during the previous events I've mentioned earlier, Six actually isn't a good child. She wasn't playing with the mannequin fingers. She's breaking them, contorting them. And after the bullies in the school kidnapped her, the first thing she does when confronted with one is pounce on it, smashing its head against the floor till it breaks. This type of an attack is fueled by emotion, anger and frustration in this frenzied attack is obvious. And she slowly stands up admiring her handiwork, showing that she can hold grudges and likes to take revenge. The doctor, for instance, when he's burned alive, she shows no remorse for her actions. Even though Six comes across to many as childish, that mask actually hides a rather sadistic and selfish side to her. Just like what we see of her in the moor, eating a helpless trapped rat and a gnome to fill her own need her own hunger. She transforms children into gnomes to help her run the all, not hesitating about taking their future away from them. When Six reaches out to help Mono, this isn't because she does it to save him. She wants to hold him. She wants to see his face. She wants him to know that she is the reason why. Mono was the one who let her get taken by the thin man. She reached out for help, but Mono didn't help her. The one who destroyed something she loved right in front of her. Mono was the one who destroyed her music box and her safe space. He was the one that took everything from her. All of this happens right here in the look exchanged between them. When Mono looks back up to look at her as if asking what's taking her so long, he realizes there is no remorse for what she's about to do. And with that, she retracts her arm and watches as Mono falls into the abyss. She has no idea what she's starting, but she's happy about it. She's gotten her revenge. Doomed to forever become the Thin Man over and over again. The best way to sum up Six is probably this quote concerning the ladies' quarters from a now defunct official little website. If the Moor had a heart, it would have lived here. So that leaves one question. If this is a cycle, that would mean there would have to have been 
a starred. The first ever six and the first ever mono. There would also have to be a way to control everything, to make sure that these events play out exactly the way they need to, to ensure that the cycle repeats. In the school, we see a chart of what appears to be the world, and scribbled all over it is the marking of the eye. I believe that it's this monster that takes control of Six's soul, manipulating it into a way in order to play out the events it needs to repeat the cycle. It's the one that leads Mono to destroy his past self, the Thin Man, by leading Mono from the train. It tells Six to go to the moor and watches as she slowly consumes more and more to fill in the void that that soul has left until at the right time she gets her soul back, consuming the completed soul of her past self, the lady. And this is precisely why the lady doesn't put up a fight. She knows exactly what's gonna happen and has accepted her fate to be eaten by herself. The soul that has been passed from one lady to the next. This could be why we see many pictures in the lady's quarters or residence that show multiple ladies. These are all previous sixes, and it isn't until these events have come to pass that Six realizes what she has done. And by that time, it's too late. Whatever higher power is controlling this world needs the signal tower to have a thin man and needs the more to have a lady. Without its interference, the lady would eventually pass and thus the nightmare and the cycle would be over. The saddest part about this is, if the thin man once released by Mono had not pursued Mono and Six and tried to break away Six from Mono, none of this would have happened. The moment the thin man grabs Six, it starts a series of events that will eventually lead her to dropping Mono. As we've seen throughout the entire game, slowly but surely, Mono and Six have actually formed a relationship, a friendship of sorts, right up to the moment when Mono releases the Thin Man. This tiny little interaction speaks volumes. Even though Six is sadistic and selfish, she's grown to care for Mono. But unfortunately, because the Thin Man takes away Six, Mono has to destroy something she loves, which in turn leads to Six hating him and doing the things she does. He begins Six's cycle to become the lady and to be eaten by herself. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. I would say that doing the same thing over and over, reliving the same experience over and over again, knowing that the outcome will always be the same, is the definition of a nightmare. And just like a true nightmare, they are both doomed to repeat the same lives over and over again, that no matter what they do, they will be powerless to stop it. But that's just a theory, a beaver theory, yeah! <laughs> well, there you have it. Uh, what was it, like a day, maybe two days after I finished doing the playthrough? I, I couldn't help myself, guys. I just had to sit down and get my thoughts out of there. And apparently, I'm not even the only one. The same day I finished my playthrough and started writing this script, I received loads of comments from you guys who had came up with basically the same thing. That this was a time loop, Mono was destined to become the Thin Man and Six the Lady. You could look at this as Little Nightmares actually getting better at what they're doing, as in people are knowing now and being able to figure it out, or worse, because now everyone knows what's going on. <laughs> I think part of the beauty of Little Nightmares, whether this theory is true or not, is getting to think up of your favorite theories. The Thin Man, in fact, isn't a monster. In fact, nothing in the Little Nightmares universe is black or white. Nothing's necessarily good and nothing evil. It's just the world that these creatures inhabit. Or is it even a world at all? Is it all just a nightmare and this creature, this eye creature, is actually the dreamer that is thinking of it all? And before I go, I do want to say 
a big thank you to everybody who has supported the Little Nightmares playthrough. I had so much fun playing it, so much fun reading the comments, seeing everybody theorize about what could be the reason behind everything. And I always have fun when it comes to Little Nightmares. And I personally can't wait to see what other Little Nightmare theories you guys come up with. And of course, maybe we'll get the television series. There's actually comic books that I haven't even looked at. So maybe that'll be a second video or, you know, something that we need to look at because there's probably going to be plenty of lore in there. But anyway, guys, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for supporting me and supporting this channel, allowing me to what is mainly a dinosaur channel to play something like this, something that you give me the freedom to be able to play and do what I really love and enjoy. And it helps so much knowing that you're gonna be there to support me, no matter what crazy thing I come up with next. So my little cuties, my little nightmares, I'll see you in another video. Oh, bye bye.